Hi guys, this was supposed to be my review of the Dell Venue 8 Pro 5855. But why it won't be just that, let me try to explain this a little bit first. I had this device for over 10 days now and I used it only for the three days. And I think there has to be a good reason why that is and I will try to explain this throughout the whole video. But one thing first, I expected to actually get the full HD version with 4GB of RAM. But what I ended up getting actually was the 1280x800 display version with just 2GB of RAM. Maybe the high-end version would have changed my mind a little bit, but I actually doubt it a little bit because of a few other things. So let's just talk about the, the design and build quality first a little bit. First of all, I did a hands-on video in October and I complained about a little thing already then. That was this. You have a noticeable gap where the plastic goes inwards and this makes it feel quite shallow. And I was hoping that this was just a preview unit issue, but no, we have it still here. The original Dell Venue 8 Pro that I reviewed didn't have this and felt way more sturdy, substantial than this one does. It also, considering this is gonna be or has been released, I think late 2015 or 2016, feels very, very heavy. Also, bezels quite big. Okay, you will need some space to hold on to, but it is thick, it is heavy, it is bulky, and just not built quite premium enough for what I would expect it to be. Because the older one that is already already like three years old felt overall better. Okay, let's quickly get around the ports. Here on the top we have the SD card tray, there should also be a SIM card version. Volume rocker, here's the microphone. The Windows button, on the left side we can see the power button, headphone jack. On the bottom there is nothing. And on the right side we have the speaker that I have a big issue with, but I will talk about it later. And the USB Type-C port. So already the design and build quality is a letdown for me. It doesn't feel substantial, it doesn't even feel really sturdy at all but therefore very, very heavy because it feels almost like a 10 inch device. And I think they could have done better. Okay, all Windows tablets seem to have the tendency to just be a little bit heavier than an Android or iOS device, but still, I think there is room for improvement. Now, let's check the display. And that is my second gripe already, 1280 by 800. Okay, in terms of scaling and all that, this is the smarter res uh, resolution. Yeah, it is the smarter solution because everything works out quite nice in terms of size but what it doesn't is is give you a nice visual experience because it's not super sharp and you will also see this within the browser and it tries to do the best but this as you can see yeah isn't convincing you see a lot of pixels and the full hd version would have definitely solved that but of course you would have had a little more let's say scaling issues but if you would mostly use universal apps and the browser you would actually have not that much of an issue the white point i guess is okay i'm not quite blown away because of the maximum brightness it just isn't amazing and this display is a little bit too yellow which you could fix the blacks are fine not really any light bleed colors though are a little bit more dull a little bit less saturated than I, I'm used to from Dell. But the colors in overall are quite nice. It's mostly the resolution that bugs me because the colors still are okay. Black and whites are fine. Maximum brightness is good enough for indoors, but it's the resolution that just doesn't convince me at all. So the Full HD version would have changed that already. But if it would have been, then it would have been also a lot more expensive, I guess so. And the battery life would have suffered. Now let's check the sound real quick. Okay, here my issue is the following. The maximum volume is actually, if you just listen to this track, okay. But if you use the normal stuff like a browser and then watch maybe YouTube or watch any TV show like that, then the maximum volume wasn't actually quite satisfying enough. But that's actually not my main issue. First of all, we only have one speaker on the right side exactly at the position where I blocked it quite a lot, at least half of the speaker during normal use. Maybe not the hugest or the biggest issue because if you have it on a stand it works out okay. But the issue that I have with, and you didn't hear this right now on this part of the demo, but it is the fluctuating volume and I have no idea. I did all the updates, I did everything. I tried to search on Google but I didn't find anyone with this issue. But what my volume does is it starts loud 
then it goes down and I mean really down it gets it gets to like 20% of the original volume then it gets up and it's always fluctuating and not even in the same amount sometimes it's for a half a second really low in volume sometimes it's two or three seconds and it fluctuates all the time and that was already the reason why I couldn't really use it more than three days because whenever I wanted to watch just a quick short YouTube video the fluctuating sound completely killed the experience and I have no idea why. It happens in the media player, it happens in the browser, it also happens with music, it just didn't happen right now, but it does happen a lot of times. So uh, this shouldn't happen on a device, this has been released, it, it should have been at least dead bug free not to come out of the box with something like this. Now the performance, okay, let's check the browsing performance, as you can see it is nice and smooth it is okay absolutely no problem the browsing experience is fine and i can't really complain about that but once you try to switch between apps and all that with just two gigabytes of ram you will see constant reloads and that is the second thing which the higher end version could have maybe solved because with four gigabytes of ram we would have had a lot more headroom for better multitasking and i've used the dell venue 10 pro that had four gigabytes of ram but that one was held back I guess same as this one by the CPU in my opinion, because 4 gigabytes of RAM should have been good enough for good multitasking, browsing, switching between apps and some universal apps and all that, but it wasn't quite, because the device so often felt like it is already playing at its limit and it needs a little bit of time to get the resources free to get to the next app. And this 2 gigabyte version on this one makes things even more so noticeable and it was even heavier, it was even more so sluggish and it just didn't feel lightweight at all. So if you want a single app experience, it is okay because then it performs quite good because the browsing and all that is fine. And if you are in just one app and don't really switch too often, the 2 gigabytes are okay. But if you want to use this device, I would definitely recommend to get the Full HD version. The display performance will be a lot better. And with 4GB of RAM, the overall experience will be noticeably dramatically actually better. Now about the battery life, and this is something where I just can't judge. Because like I said, I only used it for 3 days and it seems okay. I would have, I think on the first 2 or 3 days I got like 4 and a half to 5 hours. Let's say something at around 4 to 5 hours on screen on time with quite a high brightness though because the screen looks very dull with anything below 75. So I used it at 75 and it was okay. In terms of software Windows 10, that is pretty much the normal thing. But one thing to keep in mind, and this is actually one thing that I want to talk about a little bit longer. I don't think Windows 10 works that well on an 8 inch because it feels very improvised, a little bit not made for it because on a 10 inch it works, but I think Windows 10 still works the best at 11.6 inches and up upwards or above because you have the UI in the way, you have the big navigation bar on the bottom, you have usually an app bar on the top and all that, and that takes up so much screen real estate that you have like a small little window for your actual content, which I don't think is enough. On 10 inches, you can still get away with that. And 10 inches, I would say, is the minimum that you should get on Windows device for. And I know a lot of people will disagree because back in the days when Windows 8.1 was still a thing, a lot of people were happy with these devices, but I think times have changed. So this device maybe would have been really, really nice two years ago, but it didn't happen enough. So let me actually get just real quick for the recap, then I can make a little bit of a longer conclusion once again. Design and build quality. I think it's too heavy. It's not really built that well, but it's not built bad. So don't get me wrong, but for this price, I would expect it a little bit more of the display. Definitely not bad in terms of quality, but the low resolution on its own is already enough for me to just not like it that much. The sound on its own would have been average at best, but with the fluctuating volume, it made me not use the device. Performance, one abuse, okay. The moment you want to use more multitasking, it will get very sluggish battery life. I can't judge. And now let's get to the conclusion here why I can't really recommend this device in 2016. Because I reviewed the Dell Venue 8 Pro, I think early 2015 or no, 14, so definitely way more than two years ago and it was released like almost three years ago. And the that one delivered pretty much the same experience. The screen was on this level, the sound was even a little bit better, the overall build quality was even better and I can't tell so much how the performance was back then because a lot of time has passed and 
of course, then it was still Windows 8.1, now it's Windows 10. And I think Windows 10 actually takes a little bit more or expects a little bit more from these devices. Because when I used 2GB devices on Windows 8.1, it felt easier than it does now with 10. So they said they optimized a lot of things, but I don't quite see it. And maybe it's also the Atom as a CPU that just doesn't work that well. But overall, I think the performance experience is not good. It works on a tablet, but you can get a way better performance experience or overall experience on an Android or iOS device. Same goes for the sound, for the build quality in pretty much every aspect. So what was really nice to see back two or three years ago, these days I don't get quite the use case for it. I know there are a lot of like system administrators who just need something super portable so they can make their administrative stuff. So to maybe get a server back running and all that. And for that, it works fine. But for that, you could still get away with the three year old Dell Venue 8 Pro that delivered a pretty much same experience a few years ago. So I don't really know what else to say. I am quite disappointed, but not maybe just in the device itself, but the product category on its own. I just don't see a need for these kind of devices these days tomorrow. Yes, it runs full-fledged Windows 10, which can make a difference and you could maybe use it like a portable home media center when you are in on vacation and all that and it's still capable and it can do all the stuff. You could hook it up to a monitor and all that. But personally, I just don't know. So leave it in the comments for me and any questions and tell me if you still think this is a legit viable category of devices that should exist and if this one is maybe one you would consider because I personally I'm a little bit sorry that I had to kind of trash this device and the owners that watch this review definitely won't be happy with my result but this is what I think so far and I already said that the Dell Venue 10 8 Pro or the 10 inch version of that one was quite good, but it didn't really blow me away for the price. It didn't deliver just the best experience, but this one, yeah, that's a lot worse. So sorry for the bad rating, but I had to be honest and I thought a lot if I should even make a review or anything at all about this device, because it's definitely not very positive. But in the end, I decided I just had to. If I would have just not made this review, it would have been the cowardly way and I didn't want to do that. So I am done here. I still hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more, <laughs> more, more proper reviews in the future. Okay, until next time. Bye.